What's the complement of the union of the complements of two sets? That's what we'll be going over in today's spooky Wrath of Math lesson. This is a viewer requested video. I always appreciate those viewer requests, so be sure to leave yours down in the comments. So just to be clear about the notation we're using, this bar is a complement operation, and so are these apostrophes with the A prime and the B prime, that's A complement and B complement. So what do we get if we union A complement and B complement, and then take the complement of that? Well, some of you might notice that this is a place where we could just apply De Morgan's laws, which tell us how complement works with set union and intersection, and it's pretty intuitive if you don't remember the laws. We can, of course, think of the complement of a set kind of like taking the opposite of the set. So what's the opposite of A complement union B complement? Well, that would be equal to the opposite of A complement, which is just the set A, the opposite of union, which is intersection, and then the opposite of B complement, which is just the set B. So we see works out pretty slick. The complement of A complement union B complement is just the intersection of the sets A and B. Some of you who uh, even are familiar with the Morgan's Laws, you might not have immediately recognized that this is a place where we could apply it because De Morgan's Laws aren't usually stated with the union of A complement, B complement, and then taking the complement of that. That's a lot of complements, but it appears more clearly if we were to just relabel the sets. We could call A complement X, and we could call B complement Y, and then of course this would just be the complement of X union y, and it would look like your typical statement of one of De Morgan's laws telling us that this is equal to x complement intersection y complement. But this is the same sort of thing, and this is just rewriting it with different labels. So if you were to represent this with a Venn diagram, you would be able to see that it's true. If you shaded in the complement of A, union the complement of B, you would end up shading everything except a intersect B. So then when you take the complement of this union, you would just get A intersect B, that part which you hadn't shaded, which would confirm this equality. So I recommend giving that a try, drawing the Venn diagram. Additionally, designate a universal set, pick two sets, A and B, and then you can see that this works out in an example yourself. For this lesson though, let's just go ahead and prove this in general. Of course, since we are we're taking these what are called absolute set complements, we assume there's some underlying universal set here. So in any context, remember the universal set is the set of all objects being considered. Oftentimes that might be a set like the real numbers, in which case the complement of a set containing one and two, for example, would be all real numbers except one and two. So when we take these complements, it's assumed there's some underlying universal set. All right, so let's just get into the proof. It's pretty straightforward. Recall that to prove the equality of these two sets, we just need to prove that they are subsets of each other. So we need to prove that this is a subset of this, and we need to prove that this is a subset of this, and then we'll be done, and we can rest easy knowing that this is true. So let's get into it. To prove that this is a subset of this, we need to show that any arbitrary element of this set is also an element of this set. So we can begin by just taking an arbitrary element x from the complement of A complement union B complement. Then, just step by step, we need to apply definitions to sort of unwind what we can conclude about our element x here. So let's just take it slow. If x is an element of the complement of A complement union B complement, what does that mean? Well, that means that x is not an element of this set which, uh, whose complement it belongs to. Since it is in the complement of this set, it isn't in this set by definition. So x is not an element of the complement of A union with the complement of B. And if x is not in this union, it must not be in either of the components of this union. This must mean that x is not an element of the complement of A, and x is not an element 
of the complement of B. If it was in either the complement of A or the complement of B, then it would be in the union. But it isn't in the union, so we can conclude both of these things. Then, we just need to apply the definition of complement. If X is not an element of the complement of A, what does that mean? Well, surely that means that X is in the set A, because it's not in the complement, so it must be in the set A itself. Similarly, since X is not an element of the complement of B, it must be in the set B itself. And what is this, my friends? Clearly, this is the definition of an element that belongs to A intersect B. So we get our desired result that X is an element of A intersect B just like that. So we've just shown that any arbitrary element of the complement of A complement union B complement, take any element from that set, it has to be an A intersect B. Thus, by definition of subset, this is a subset of this. Then, all that remains to be shown is that this is a subset of this. Turns out that's super easy, because all we were doing were basic logical applications of definitions here. So in fact, you can just take what we wrote and spin it the other direction, go backwards, and you will prove that this is a subset of this. I'll just talk you through it. We would begin by taking an arbitrary element of A intersect B. So let X be in A intersect B. Then by definition, X is in A and X is in B. Then by definition of set complement, that means X is not in the complement of A and X is not in the complement of B. Then by definition of set union, that would mean that X is not in the complement of A union, the complement of B, which by definition of complement means that X is in the complement of that set it doesn't belong to. So you just use the same statements in the other direction and that would show that this is a subset of this Thus, they're both subsets of each other. Thus, by definition of set equality, these two sets are equal. And so that's how we prove De Morgan's law for the complement of the union of two sets. In this case, of course, we were proving it in a slightly weird context where we're unioning two complement sets, which makes the logic just a little more awkward, but it is in fact the same exact thing, because like I mentioned at the beginning of the lesson, we could just relabel these complement sets as X and Y, and it would look very familiar. So that's it. We see that if we take the complement of the union of two complements, we just get the inter section of the original sets A and B. Pretty cool. So I hope this video helped you understand the proof. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other lesson requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the spookiest math lessons on the internet.